Okay, so we're recording now. And let me just share my second desktop here. Okay, so we're gonna go over a few things uh, this morning and, and it's gonna be impossible. There's gonna be an impossibly lot of stuff, just lots of big things, little things, nuanced things. Um, and so I'm recording, but then we'll, we'll practice this over the next week and a half or so. So, um, but anyway, we're gonna talk about um, perspective. We're gonna talk about Photoshop. We're gonna start talking about layering things up in Photoshop, uh, creating one of these uh, design collages. Um, but first perspective. So we've talked about um, plan and section and elevation a bit, um, at least enough to get you guys up and going. So in the afternoon, we'll start um, cutting up your, your, um, your, your schemes, your, your uh, massing models and uh, starting to develop a sort of section elevation uh, plan drawings of them. Uh, but at the same time, you know, in this, in the, the morning class, let's talk about perspective. Oh, we've also covered axon, axonometric or isometric drawings, sort of three-dimensional abstracted uh, representations, right? Um, and so let's talk about perspective. I'm just gonna open up one of these typical, um, let's see, project one demo maybe. Yeah, I think that's, that work. Whew. While that's opening up, did you guys catch the, the lightning and thunder show here in Las Vegas last night? Last couple of nights, actually, it seems like. Just going to turn off some of these layers. Just get those out of the way. Turn the model on. Let's see what I have here. Uh, all right, this says top view, but I know it's parallel or, or um, uh, isometric view. I'm going to turn this to perspective. Okay. And so in perspective, you start to see things just like we do with our eyeballs. Okay. Or with the camera. So you're taking a photo with your phone camera um, or a DSLR or something like that, then um, you know exactly what I mean, right? Um, and so a couple of things related to, let's say, if this was a, a camera lens, I'm going to go the viewport properties, click on this label. Now at the very bottom, here's the label, right? It says wireframe shaded, I can, and et cetera. Like it could change what the view looks like or how it's rendering out uh, um, the geometry on my screen. I can also set the view to be top, bottom, left, right. And so it's the same menu that we've been working in. Down at the very bottom, there's uh, an option called viewport properties. When I click that, it brings up the viewport properties over here in this properties box. So it's telling me the kind of projection is perspective, right? Um, and it gives me the title of stuff and I can change my camera location in X, Y, and Z. I can also rotate it if I need to. But one of the things, that, one of the properties that I think is really helpful is lens length. So 50 millimeter lens. I don't know if any of you like to like photography a lot. I have a, a Nikon DSLR. Um, I have a 50 millimeter lens. It's like, it does not adjustable. It's amazing how tight that lens is, um, you know, to, to really like sort of get all of the picture that I want. Um, I really have to like move physically backwards in order to sort of fit it all in, right? So I got this 50 millimeter lens in my case because I wanted the, the low F stop. And, you know, I, I kind of like having that constraint and makes you a better photographer to sort of work within a frame. But, but this is 50 millimeter is actually really sort of tight and, and, uh, and more parallel than I'd want. Our, our human eyes sort of see closer to sort of 28, 30 millimeter. Um, you know, a typical DSLR lens might be a 35 millimeter. Um, you can go really super wide angle and go something like 15, right? And then you start to see a lot more, but the, the perspective becomes, um, um, the lower the, the lens length, right? The wider the angle and then the more uh, um, distorted the, the, the the, the uh, perspective gets, right? So 25, 28, 30 millimeter, it's, it's kind of a nice, a nice balance in sort of trying to get things just right. All right, so let's talk about this for just a moment. What, what makes this a perspective? Let me bring up my cursor. I think we've talked about this before, but just in case, let's, let's talk about it again. Set to red, maybe I'll just change the width just a little bit. But if I trace these back, Right, these edges are not parallel like they were in an axon, right? Oh, that was me trying to draw a straight line. I was not successful. 
Here, actually, I can just draw a line like this, can't I? Oh, yeah. That's the way to do it right there. Okay, and so you'll see actually just off my screen, there's a, there's a vanishing point over here, right? That all of these things sort of, let me just undo this one since it didn't line up with the, there we go. Okay, and so you can see off the screen over here, you get a, a vanishing point. It's the same thing in this direction. Should be pretty close. I'm not, not quite aligned, but right in here, there should be a point, one of those vanishing points. There we go. It looks like it's right over here. I probably could have drawn that line a little better in order to line up with it. All right. Let me just talk about this for just a moment, right? So if you think about this, then. Everything on this sort of ground plane, right? Um, if I drew a grid on it, right, the grid would also be on, on perspective and all the, those lines would converge back to one of these vanishing points. Okay. Now, if you thought about, let's say a six, six foot person standing along this line in space, so let me just draw, let's say a six foot person. Let's say this is uh, 12 feet. So about halfway up, if I think about this as a vertical line, about halfway up would be six feet. Super hard to draw scale person with your mouse. But bear with me for just a second as I attempt to do so. All right, so let's say, this is the height of a six foot person. I'm just going to delete some of these lines out since they're really kind of distracting me at the moment. Okay. Do, do, do. So now if I think about the line, right? that goes through there and goes back to all, both of these vanishing points off in space here. I did that wrong, let's undo that one. It was actually lower. There we go. Okay, and so what we can see here is that, hopefully we can see in just a second, <coughs> pardon me, is that, as we get closer, right, our scale figures get larger. And as we get further away, our scale figures get smaller. Okay. So one back here, again, would be little, little bitty, right? So we can see that that height adjusts as we move. And it's the same thing in this direction, right? So if I go in this direction, I get somebody out here a little closer, just very gestural sort of loose interpretation of a human figure here, but you get the idea, all right? So we're always trying to establish some sort of eye level here, and then to sort of stick to it when we're starting to put scale figures in here. And we understand that things in perspective if they get closer to us, they look larger or look closer to the right size scale. As you get further away, they start to shrink. They start to get um, smaller, smaller than they actually are. Okay. All right. Typically for the purposes of a two point perspective, we consider all these vertical lines, just we just sort of keep them vertical. I think this might actually have just a slight third, third um, point that would be way, way up high. But these are for all practical purposes, parallel, okay, the, the vertical lines. Okay, so this is what we typically call a two-point perspective. We have two vanishing points. We have a horizon line that connects them, right? 
Um, and then depending on where we are relative to that horizon line and where those vanishing points are, um, we have eye level at the ground. Our eye level is actually above, it's almost like we're on a trampoline or something or looking up higher, taller. We're looking kind of down on these people, these folks, right? All right. If all we did was simply oops, tilt this, right? Then suddenly we look like we're lower. And so we're at maybe eye level here now. And now we actually see the ceiling above us, right? Um, we see the floor below us um, and on and on. Okay, so am I making sense so far? All right, it's kind of like how you see in, in real life. You look at your room, particularly on the oblique, right? And you see a two point perspective. If I look at it like this, suddenly I start to look like it, you know, where I, one, one set of uh, planes are, are sort of perpendicular to me. Then I start to get like a one point perspective right here in the center. So the way we use this, here's a one point perspective. And so if I have basically a condition where one of these, that's pretty close, yeah, right there. So there's our, our point. where one of these um, sets of planes are actually perpendicular to our eye, right? Then we only get a one point perspective. As soon as I start to look at it, again, on the oblique, right? Then we start to get a two point perspective. Really important to understand that. Let me just clear out that little crosshair there where I had the one point perspective. All right, let's see here. And let me bring up, make sure I don't have a chat, anything in the chat. For some reason, it, the chat disappears every time I share my screen. Here we go. So I'll leave this up just in case somebody's saying something to me and I can just sort of, sort of figure out what that is. All right, so we have this. I'm gonna go ahead and model a ground plane just for fun really quickly. Let's see here, maybe, come on now. There we are. I'm just going to draw a plane and top view, just draw a rectangular plane. Now it looks like we're on a tabletop sort of plateau. And if we get close, close to the edge, we just fall off the, the edge of the earth. You know, sort of the earth is flat sort of thing, kind of good thing going on here, right? So um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit, you know, that horizon and, and trying to sort of cover these things up. And, and uh, let me just, again, Try to get this back to perspective here. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back to um, uh, sort of rendered mode. So go ahead and I think I'm unshaded right now uh, here in a minute. As soon as this respawns, come on. Here we go. Um, I'll turn it back to rendered here. There you are. Ah, all right. So again, we have this, this sort of generic white clay rendered model. And if I want to look like I'm at eye level, right? Let's say again, this was like sort of 12 feet, we said sort of floor to ceiling. Then maybe I go about halfway down and I try to actually make that where my eye would be, okay? So now I look like I'm actually at eye level right around this line right here, right? So the way to think about that is if you connected the vanishing points up with a straight line, right, that would be sort of eye level, all right? So if you want to be um, uh, sort of at the, you would want to sort of find that six foot mark and try to get it so that this above it and this below it would sort of be evened out as far as what you can see up top and what you can see down below in this sort of angle of perspective here. All right, and as we get higher, you, you start to see much more, you know, ceiling and things like that. All right. Now from here, I can click here and just rotate laterally, still sort of generally, more or less keep my vantage point here. But let me go ahead and I'm just gonna take a capture of this really quickly and we'll bring that into Photoshop and we'll start to do some things in Photoshop. Okay. 
Um, I have my ground plane on, and what that allows us to do is to project some of these soft shadows onto it. Okay. Um, I could always go to the render settings and let's just check those out really quickly before we go any further. I adjusted lens length over here in my, my viewport settings. I have a transparent background. I'll go ahead and keep a transparent background. Okay. Um, I have a ground plane. I'll keep the ground plane on. See what it looks like with the sun on. All right, now when I have the sun on, you can see a couple of things changed. I start to get some crisper, some more crisp shadows, right? So I still get the soft shadows projected on the ground. As I get closer to some of these surfaces, it gets darker and then brighter as I get away. But you can also see I start to get these sort of ray traced um, hard shadows, right? And of course, I can change the intensity of the sun, right? Sometimes those shadows can get a little washed out or baked out there. Just go a little, yeah, kind of like that. Let's see here. I might just keep the soft shadows for right now. Yeah. So I'm just going to turn those off, keep the skylight on for now and turn off the sun. We'll, we'll continue to sort of play around with, with lighting conditions, right? Because I think that's one of the key things that we can do in perspective really quickly, right? Um, and with these render settings is we can start to play around with not only the, the, just the intensity of the sun, but where it's located throughout the day and the year, right? And uh, begin to really sort of play around with light again as a material or uh, some sort of experiential, some sort of other, you know, extra quality to be, to be uh, to, that can augment the experience of, of visiting this, this museum of yours, right? So um, let's say this is one of my planar study models. I'm gonna go ahead and um, take a, a capture of this. I'm just gonna say to file. Um, the scale, I'm gonna up the scale to something ridiculously large. Well, maybe that's too large. 12,000 by 6,000 pixels is pretty large. Go with 8,000 by 40. So I'm just to change the scale to two and that way I get a nice sort of um, rendered output. I, I get some resolution to it, right? The, the amount of dots per inch, okay? Um, so without changing the, the, the physical size in inches, I up the mem number of the scale of the amounts of, doubled the, the amounts of pixels in both directions, both width and height, um, quadrupling the amount of information I have, um, just in case. And you can see I have the transparent background selected. So you can start to see the output here that I'll get. I'll have a little bit of a white ground plane here. I'll have a horizon and I'll have a, a transparent background. We'll talk about putting in sky, background um, components, um, uh, ground coverings and things like that. Let's go ahead and, and plus landscape and, and things. Go ahead and hit okay. Now, it's not lost on me, and I'll, I'll talk about this here in a moment, right? Let's see, we'll call this render capture 01, okay? When I do this with just that, that white clay model rendering, I'm making an assumption that I'm, if I want to place any materials or, or textures in here, then I can do that later on post-producing in Photoshop, okay? And oftentimes that's a quicker, easier, and probably better looking way of doing it. Um, but suffice to say, once this is done, I don't know why it's taking so long, I, I can actually begin to apply shaders here in Rhino um, that do a similar thing. And so I'll go ahead and, and capture both really quickly. I'll just show you again. We'll review a few things. What we did last time when we talked about materials or shaders. So I went over to this paint, paint tube materials tab and we created a new one. We hit the plus and we said um, import from material library. And I had this big long list of stuff. We used the white matte generic uh, material, plaster material. And then we just changed its color. But as you can see, you probably noticed this if you went through this early, uh, later on your, on your own, there's a number of, of uh, things on here and they're meant to be helpful to you. Although some are and some aren't. Um, let's see, we have things like concrete, right? So we can get concrete light, concrete dark, sorts of things. Let's see what happens when we, I'll do concrete dark. I have a funny feeling some of these will be terrible. But um, let me just go ahead and load that. All right, here we have concrete dark. I just want to sort of see what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and select this wall. And I'll right click on this material and tell it to assign to the objects that are selected. Now, there's a couple of things here. One, look at this. 
it looks like it's been wallpapered, right? In other words, the scale of the, the, the pattern, the texture that it's a, that's mapping on here, right? It's mapping it into a grid and the scale looks, seems way off. And so you start to see this ever repeating um, pattern that, that's pretty awful, right? I mean, I'll, let's be honest, it's, it's, it's terrible. Maybe if I try to bump this up the size, the color map, let's see if I can go above 100 and I guess I can't. Yeah, let's see if I change the bump map, which actually applies a texture. Yeah, so that's actually pretty terrible, pretty awful shader. I would not use that, right? So this is the game you play when you're talking about shaders. You can actually load them, um, download them off the internet and things like that. Um, but again, you're always sort of trying to understand and, and develop your skills accordingly on where you want to fight certain battles, right? So if I wanted to apply a concrete texture to this wall or a couple of walls, maybe wood texture to a couple of walls, um, you know, one way to do it would be to sort of think about how to do it here in, in the uh, Photoshop, or sorry, here in, um, here in Rhino or whatever I'm using to, to render these things out. Ugh. Um, however, you know, I, I wouldn't always say that that's the, the best way to do it, right? Um, do you want to spend a lot of time doing this and then it takes longer for it to render, particularly when you have materials that are glossy or have reflections like glass um, or certain types of metal? Um, or do you want to fight those battles in Photoshop afterwards? So again, as you can see here, if I zoom in on this now, this is the light concrete. And honestly, the, the pattern or texture isn't that great. I mean, I'll, I'm not impressed to be blunt. Right. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, I'll, I'll select this and I'll, I'll add another one um, that maybe has another sort of uh, map to it. I'll say import from material library. It'll bring up a list of stuff. Let's look at woods, right? You often see a lot of really awful wood textures the first time somebody does this. Um, renders and stuff because the, the 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 patterns of the grain will be like out of scale or they'll repeat or they'll be way off. Let's, let's try like a polished teak. I don't know what that will look like here in Rhino, but let's just open that up. Teak is one of those great woods that can withstand moisture and and uh, UV a little better than some of the other woods if you're using it on the outdoors, right? And it basically just looks like. Ugh, yeah, again, so you can see a little bit of that, that grain that it's supposed to put on there, but it's not good. I mean, right? I, I wouldn't consider, I wouldn't look at that and go, man, that, that looks really hot. Um, so it's just one of those things where, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll give something some tone or maybe we want a certain texture in here and we'll use the renderings. But for the most part, I'm gonna be going over in this summer, we'll be developing how you post-produce these sort of effects in Photoshop, okay? So I'm gonna take the, the rendering that I had before. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out so it's not using up some of that system resources. And I'm gonna open up Photoshop. Actually, I already have Photoshop opened up. Just going to open up the rendering that we, we captured really quickly. And we'll take a look at Adobe's interface and I'll talk about how to find some resources as we start to collage in Photoshop. Right. And that's really the kind of word, right? Whereas in Rhino, we can sort of model things with lots of precision down to decimal points of accuracy. Um, and then we, you know, when we try to apply material that's imperfect, like concrete or wood or grass, or, you know, it, it almost looks too perfect again, or it doesn't look quite right. Um, uh, uh, here, right, we're, we're starting about like building up layers of things, right? And, and sort of, you know, it's, it's kind of can be kind of messy and it doesn't have to be photorealistic. In fact, I would argue some of the better ones aren't, right? Let me just uh, get this thing starting to shut down here. I thought maybe that would be easy. Power, yes. Uh, um, of course, update and shut down. Okay, there we go. So is this opening? Oh, okay, here it's on the desktop. Redner capture, I guess I forgot to spell this morning. All right, and you can see it here. Okay, 
Now, for whatever reason, oh, you know what? I had that transparent background and look what happened. I accidentally captured it as a JPEG. And so it turned that, that background to black, right? It flattened everything out. Again, JPEGs don't remember those, those uh, alpha channels, those transparent uh, regions. It doesn't preserve them, right? So that's a mistake on my part. If you happen to make that mistake, um, there's a way to fix that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the interface here. We have tools on the left-hand side, very similar to Illustrator. They're different sort of tools though. Um, we have a bunch of boxes and settings over here, including layers right on the right-hand side. Um, so again, similar to Illustrator, if I start to drag this out, we have some settings up here along the top, right? Um, and those change as we start to change tools or change what we have selected. And then we have some pull-down menus. If you don't see a particular thing over here on the right, you can go to the Windows pull-down and you can toggle it on or off over here, okay? I really wanna make sure that we have the layers selected here. And right now we have one layer, it's called background and it's locked. I'm just gonna double click that. And a box is gonna pop up and it says, are you sure you want to make this a, a different type of layer than a locked background layer? I'm just gonna hit okay. All right, now we can, we can change that background layer. Okay. It's a layer we can turn on or off and we have a transparent background underneath. Now this is Photoshop. So what we're doing is we're dealing with raster images, right? In other words, they're pixel-based. If I start to zoom in, you can see that really this image isn't an outline that's filled in with a solid color, right? And I can't, I can't scale it up or scale it down without affecting its quality because it's basically just a grid of cells. Um, and each, each cell is just you know um, uh, uh, assigned a, a color value. And then of course, the, you know, this mosaic, when we zoom out, just like you're, just like the old cathode ray tube televisions, um, you know, give you the, the appearance of, uh, simulate the sort of appearance of an actual photo or picture. All right, so, um, so just like if we were outputting whatever you output you're from your phone cameras or your, your cameras, right? That's what we're dealing with, raster images, right? They're, they're basically based in a set of pixels in a grid and each pixel is assigned a color. Um, it's that sort of sum um, of smoothing out across the entire field of the sort of mosaic of coloration um, that gives us gives us the illusion of an image, right? A picture. So there's a couple of things here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to accidentally fix my error here. I'm going to try to select everything that's black, black background, and uh, then delete that part of the layer. Okay. And so there's several selection tools here. One is a rectangular one. I can select everything that's in that rectangle, and then I can delete it away if I want, right? I can draw different types of shapes as selections and draw a circle and delete that part out, right? Again, I delete that part of the layer and then suddenly I can see what, anything else that's below it, right? There are no layers below this. So then I just see the transparent background below it instead. Um, let me just undo that. We'll do this all at once. There are other types of selection tools that can be a little easier when it comes to, to selecting, let's say a, a pure black background against a, a very light colored model like we have here, right? So we have things where we can go around and draw shape uh, or, or to snap and draw a polygon around this. So, you know, for instance, if we didn't have that sort of contrast, you know, another way to do this would be to try to try to select the shape around it by being you know, very precisely sort of snapping to different places, right? And depending on how quick and, and accurate I wanna be, right? I could begin to cut things out like that. Then there's even smarter tools, the magic wand, the quick selection, the magic wand. So the magic wand and the object selection, I'm just gonna use the magic wand. What that does is it, it lets me pick a portion of the, of the image and so I picked like to say the black portion. And then what it did is it looked for all of the sort of contig contiguous areas around that were similar and within a tolerance, I could set the tolerance. I could say, uh, you know, be really careful. Like, uh, you know, sample this, this uh, color value of where I clicked um, and then, you know, get all of the sort of, you know, stuff that the, the exact same color or close to that color, right? And I can, again, I can tell it to add to my selection. So I can go ahead and click in here as well. And click in here as well, click in here as well. And I can do that here because I have a lot of contrast between my model and my background, right? 
Now, if this was going to be a really difficult chore, I would probably just go back to Rhino and recapture this and, and you know, just not be a dummy and, and export it or save it as a PNG file. But if I go ahead and do that, it looks pretty good, right? Missed a couple of spots right there and right there. I'm just going to zoom in on those. Double check and make sure I'm not missing anything else. Use that magic wand tool. Click and click. All right. Now look at this. I'll undo that. There's one other thing I'll, I'll mention here, right? So again, you can say the quick selection tool, which allows you to sort of, you know, they'll try to sort of figure out as you drag your cursor, right? Where there's dramatic contrast. Yeah, there we go. There's some in there. There's some in there. Um, you know, there's the object selection tool. I'm not sure what this is, but maybe it's trying to, you select the object and maybe it tries to pick out the background. Um, there are other uh, places where, oh no, I guess that's just not gonna work. Um, you know, Adobe has actually been tinkering around. They're actually online tools. I think it deals with mainly like cutouts of people. So if you were trying to make your own silhouettes of let's say photographs of people and like a crowd or something um, where they, they use uh, AI um, sort of deep learning algorithm um, to sort of try to figure out how to pull out the background Give you the PNG file with a transparent background behind all the people, right? So there are, you know, sort of ways to, that they're trying to leverage computation more and more. Um, if I go to select pull down, right, similar to how there's a select pull down in Illustrator, I could just say select by color range. Now I can just select everything, let's say that's black, and I can look at it and I can change its, you know, again, its tolerance, right? Yeah, that, look, that looks pretty good. Let's see what that looks like here. Again, I I can do that because of the of the uh, because of the um, the contrast I have here. I'm actually going to do that one more time. It's going to be a little less selective here. Filter. Let's say select color range. Just select all the black. Again, I have to do this because I was real klutz this morning. I saved a JPEG instead of a PNG. Right, so there we go. It doesn't look so bad there. All right. Okay, so now we're literally going to start opening and closing and copying and pasting um, additional JPEG and images and PNGs. We're gonna open them up, copy and paste them from there into this one. And we'll start to build up a set of layers as a sort of set of collage components that then we can arrange, scale, um, compose, um, you know, adjust the coloration, um, things like that, right? So let's start first. I'm, I typically just go to Google, Google image search is actually so handy. And I search for things like concrete textures or wood textures. You can even go to the image search and then, and then sort of set things for, let's say, um, darker colors, lighter colors, um, you know, larger versus smaller images. You want to, want to sort of try to find um, things like that, you can start to pull them out. Um, sometimes, you know, you could start saying like, okay, look for words like seamless if you, if that's important. Um, right, I've done the same thing with some woods here. Pulled some of these out. Um, I've done the same thing with this couple of high res skies, right? Where I just look these things up in Google image. Um, and what I do is I try to build these things up. So here I, I, I uh, Googled Photoshop ground cover. And I got some nice sort of things that I can start to clip out here that helped me sort of hide that, that fake false horizon, that sort of flat um, edge of the earth horizon, um, you know, grasses, uh, you know, sort of found me sort of um, taller plants, um, mounding plants, you know, so that sort of ground cover up and uh, maybe some flowers and things like that. All right. So I, I started to pull some of these things out just to sort of show you where I was getting these. Um, you know, and, and what I'm sort of, you know, searching for Photoshop ground textures, right? Um, will give you certain things, whether it's, you know, travertine, flagstone, pavers, um, uh, you know, dried dirt cracks, you know, things like that. And then, you know, you go to the similars and you start to get certain things. So you can go down this rabbit hole quite a bit. What I recommend doing is trying to, you know, try to open up some tabs, save some certain things. Um, you know, try to label them, save them in a, a place where you can create a, your own library, 
right? You can go through later and, and save them. Same thing here, you know, trees for Photoshop, desert trees for Photoshop. Um, trying to sort of find, I, I put the for Photoshop because sometimes then that gives you sort of higher resolution things or things that already have the background cut out, right? Okay, so um, basically before class, I, I sampled several things here. We'll open these up in Photoshop. There's some concrete, there's some ground, there's some ground, some plants, concrete, sky, some trees, some more concrete texture, some wood textures, etc. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to build up this thing step by step, but I'm going to go quicker than you could possibly follow along. I recommend just sort of look watching. Okay. And then we understand then over this this week and, and probably into next week that we'll continue to sort of zero in on certain certain of these techniques and certain tools, right? And sort of try to develop those skills, all right? So this is just a quick demo to whet your appetite. Um, and, then, and then again, we'll, we'll dive down deeper so you can follow along and we'll start to do things over the rest of this week and next week, okay? Just wanna make that clear. So. If sit back and, and relax and watch and ask ask any questions you might have. Um, yeah, all right. So I'm just here in the in the uh, the folder I made where I started to download these things. Let me just go ahead and minimize Chrome for a minute. And I'm just going to look at this this sort of white grunge texture. It can sometimes be an excellent concrete. This one's a little on the the small side when it comes to scale. Oh, white grunge. I kind of like the white grunge. I, don't know. I like both of these. I'll open these up in Photoshop, both of these. Right. So again, these are JPEG images. Sometimes they're PNG images. I'm opening those in Photoshop as well. Every time I open up something new, I get another tab up here. Right. So there's my render capture that I opened and started to modify. Right. I cut out the background. Here's some concrete. Right. All right. I'm also going to open up this sky. Let's go ahead and open that up. Open with. Photoshop. All right. So here we have this background. I'm going to go ahead and select this entire image. And I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go to my render capture and I'm going to paste it in. Okay. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and select everything. I can do that with my rectangular box. I'm just select the entire image here. If I just want to select the whole thing, I can just, the, the shortcut for that is Command or Control A, right? I, it's Command A for me on a Mac, Control A for you guys back on a PC. And then I can just hit Control C, right? Copy, just like you would copy and paste, like if you're copy and pasting from Microsoft Word or from, you know, anything else, right? And Control V or Command V. For me. All right, you can see I might have some a size problem here, um, and that my rendering was so high res that you know the sky then in comparison looks kind of dumb, but it's on its own layer, right? I can turn that layer on or off. I can turn this layer on or off, right? Can move this one around. Now I'm going to go ahead and resize it. Okay. And here's we're going to be using the edit pull down and the image pull down quite a bit. So edit pull down first, transform. The shortcut for that is command or control Z or sorry, control T. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this perspective out. Oh, it's a little blurry, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it in here for a minute anyway. All right. So you can see I have this pretty dramatic cloudscape. I have these plateaus. It's almost like when you're driving down I-15, like towards Utah or something, it's kind of what it kind of reminds me of. All right, and I, I don't necessarily want to see this horizon by the end. And, and this is maybe a little a shock, right? Like, it's like we have this sort of weird rendered um, immaterial thing and then our sky is like overly detailed, right? So trying to sort of even these things out as we go will be part of the key to sort of making a, a, a I think a, a really nice um, a collage, all right? So I have my sky here. Um, I'm gonna go to the image pull down with my sky and I'm just gonna start that, that process. I'm gonna go to the adjustments, right? So image pull down and adjustments. You can see there's a lot here, but one of them has to do with hue and saturation, right? So that has to do with how we color this. And I can desaturate things, saturation, refers to how much color you have. So if I desaturate something, I start to pull out the color. If I desaturate it completely, it goes to grayscale, right? I can, you know, make it so colorful, it, you know, makes your eyes hurt just looking at it. That wouldn't be any good. 
If I can start to pull out some of that electric blue and just sort of tone it down so it's more of a steel grayish blue. And I could always also make this warmer or cooler, right? Give it more violet or, you know, kind of weird here. Um, but I could always sort of colorize this. I'm just going to sort of try to tone this down a bit more. So that's kind of grayed out. You know, I don't want the, everybody to look at it and go in. I mean, look at that blue sky, right? Um, so anyway, here we go. It's like a day like we had yesterday, like clouds suddenly appear out of nowhere. All right. Um, what else? Ah, we talked about this concrete texture, all right? So, so far I have two layers, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on this one. I'm gonna rename it sky, kind of helps to see this. I'm gonna rename this um, building model, right? Cause this is the, just the building model layer. There we are. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, I have this sky image open. I'm just gonna close that for right now. Just gonna look at this concrete layer. This one or this one? Ooh, kind of like this one. I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. Con control A, then copy, control C, and then paste, control V. And what you'll see is that it's, it's got this, this, uh, this texture, right? And I'm just going to control T and just gonna size it up, right? It's gonna transform it, I can stretch it make it bigger. All right, now there's a couple of things I'm gonna do here. One is I'm gonna look at how to make it an overlay layer, in which case it's just going to map over certain portions. You can see there, I kind of like that multiply, right? Now you can see that it's starting to map that concrete texture onto that, that surface, but it's, it's mapping it over the entire photo. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to selectively delete the part that isn't over the surface. And that way we can give this surface just a concrete texture by putting that concrete texture in and then making an overlay layer. So I, here's that layer, it's called, I'll just, I'll rename it concrete texture. And then what I did is I went to the type of layer it is and instead of normal, you know, I could have a darken, multiply color, linear. We can go through these and really take a look-see at them. Some of these are would be awful, obviously. Yeah, you probably wouldn't want to do the, the subtract or exclusion, kind of weird. Okay. But this multiply looks pretty nice. And so now I'm going to take this layer, I can turn it on or off, right? You can see I have the whole rectangle here. I'm just going to tr selectively trim that. So I'm going to go to my polygonal lasso tool. It's over here, polygonal lasso tool. And this is where I'm going to really carefully Go around. And I'm just going to snap around this thing and define this area that I want to keep here. Okay, so I'm just going to cut out, I'm trying to do this as nicely as possible carefully as possible, just a little bite taken out there by this surface. Just move right around that, just a, just a hair. I hold down my keyboard, my space key on my keyboard, and I can pan, make sure that I'm going around here. And I'm just, just trying to be super careful. It looks like I might just have trimmed things out just a little bit there, let's go ahead and try that. All right. Now what I've done is I've selected this shape so if I hit delete, then I'll, I'll basically end up um, deleting the part of the, the uh, layer that I wanna keep, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna undo that. Now I'm gonna go to select, I'm gonna say select inverse, right? In other words, I want to take what I have selected and unselect it, take everything that was unselected and select it, right? So when I go to inverse, just check this out, right? You can see right now I have just this shape selected, right? I have this sort of selection area around the shape. I go to select inverse, what it does is it selects the entire thing and then cuts that shape out so that I'm selecting everything but that shape. Now I can hit delete. And now I've trimmed out the rest of that, that uh, um, overlay layer, right? And I've only kept the portion that's over this 
the surface, right? Okay, and so again, and it, again, it's a layer here. I can just sort of turn it on or off, right? Just that concrete texture. All right. Maybe I try that with the wood texture. Let's open up some wood. I'll open up both of these really quickly and take a look at them. Looks like one is sort of a, like a sort of, I don't know what you would call that, a white maple or a beech or maybe a, Maybe it's bamboo sort of flooring. I, I kind of like this one actually for maybe some cladding here. Um, wood cladding, kind of, kind of a weird thing you don't usually see, but try it. I'm just gonna go ahead and select it all. Control A, copy, Control C. Now I'm gonna go back to this rendering, Control V, right? Whether it's pasted in. I have a new layer. Again, every time I paste something in, it's gonna put it on another layer. And so I have to double check that it's good practice and good to get in the habit of sort of looking there first and saying, okay, let's make sure it's in the right layer. It's on its own layer. Um, let's label the layer. Let's, let, we can move the layers up and down and suddenly, right? Um, the layers behind another layer, right? So these things, the order that these things appear in the layer list are the order that they are sort of stacked as if they were pieces of trace paper on your desk, right? Okay, all righty then. So there's a couple of things we're gonna do with this one. We're gonna have, with this one, we have lines. And so we have to be very careful to match the perspective, right? Um, but we also have to scale things. And we also need to uh, do a few things here with color matching the color. And we also need to make it an overlay layer so that we actually keep some of the shadow and um, stuff like that on there. So let's go ahead and look at this. I'm going to, let's say we'll, we'll take this surface and we'll look make it look like it's wood that sort of wraps around. All right. so. I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that right now. The first thing I wanna do is you notice that this is very bright and opaque. And so I can't really see the model behind it that I want to sort of match up with. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take this layer and I'm just gonna temporarily turn its opacity down so I can sort of see through it at the same time, okay? So now I'm gonna to go to the edit transform box here. And instead of using scale, I'm gonna use, I think it's distort. Or is it perspective? Probably perspective. No, it's distort. It's always the, the one I don't pick, distort. There we go. What that'll let me do is that'll let me snap these corners into place to sort of line things up with the model, the geometry that I just want to use. And I'm gonna zoom in now and make sure that I really have this stuff actually lined up as best as I can here. So go ahead and match up that corner. We'll move over here. Do the same thing. There's that corner. When I zoom way in like this, of course it's gonna look a little goofy because it's gonna to start to look pixelated. However, You know, when I zoom back out, it starts to resemble what I want. Okay, so that's getting there. That's getting there. Now we're gonna have to trim this out. We're gonna try to make this a certain type of, of uh, texture, right? So let's go ahead and trim this out. In this case, I'm going to go around The shape. I'm going to delete out the part of the texture that's that's sort of superimposed over that shape. And I'm going to look at the layer type. And again, I'm just going to look at how I might be able to. Okay, so it's looking like up here are some of my better bets. Multiply, linear burn. Linear burn isn't terrible. Because again, we can start to see the shadows. And I'll show you how you can start to paint more shadows on if you need to. Uh, a couple of other things, right? This has already turned to something darker. What I'm gonna do is maybe turn down the opacity. Um, I can also change um, how vibrant or saturated it is, right? I can, I can try to take out some of that, that color. Just sort of, you know, again, I don't want it to turn it just completely gray, but I don't want it to be like bright orange when everything else is sort of subdued, right? Now look at this, we're starting to get orange and blue 
which by no coincidence are complementary colors. So they're across each other on the color wheel, right? So something else to, that we can always look at when we're doing these things. Now I'm gonna paste another version of this wood texture and we call this wood texture two. And I'm gonna do something different to this, although it's gonna be pretty close. I'm just gonna turn the opacity down so I can see it a little better. And I'm gonna to go to, again, transform, distort. I'm gonna move this into place, but we also have the underside of this surface. I wanna make it look like the wood cladding gets to this corner and then wraps around the bottom, right? As in, we really thought about the corner condition there and then made everything sort of line up accordingly. And so what I want to do, oh, yeah, is to sort of, again, really carefully line this up. There's that little bite out there. All right, now it's time to line this up. You just wanna make sure that cladding looks really, kind of looks like, oh, actually, that doesn't quite line up. We get a little off there, I wonder why. It's because the bottom and the top aren't. Oh, here, let me undo that. And I'm matching up the bottom with the top and I should be matching up the bottom with the bottom. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna flip it so that the bottom becomes the top. So I'm gonna take this layer and I'm gonna say transform. I'm just gonna say flip. Is it flip vertically or flip horizontally? Yeah, we'll see. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and distort it. Here we go. Now those should line up a little better. Hopefully. I just want to make sure it lines up nicely. Again, hopefully. Just move that into place. That is not lining up nicely. There, it's a little better now. Go back up here. Yeah, something's off. Maybe I flipped it the other with the wrong way or something so that what was up is now down. Oh, that's gonna bug the, the snot out of me, even though I'm gonna show you how that, we can actually fix that anyway, but let me just do this. Transform scale. I'm just gonna drag this up <laughs> and flip it like that. There we go. Now I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna go ahead and transform, distort. Oh, it's just bugging the living daylights out of me, but as one does. So anal retentive. Oh, you see that, that matches up so much better now. Yeah, yeah. All right. Say magnifique. All right. Let's zoom in. Let's make these things actually line up for realsies now. There we are. And there. Yeah. Do the same thing back here. We have a ways to go over here. We need to move that back to a point where we want it. And then adjust that one up. Oh, it's still not. Uh, oh, that's weird. Usually I don't have a problem with that. Maybe this one is just. <sighs> one of those days, shouldn't have gotten out of bed. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Um, I'm gonna fix that anyway. I'm gonna go to, um, I think we use linear burn, but one of the things I'm also going to do is tone that down. And I'm also gonna darken it up. So uh, let's see here. I'm gonna get use one of my paintbrushes. I'm gonna use the dodge burn tool. So dodge will lighten things and burn will, will darken things. Now I have this bottom layer selected, the wood texture layer, wood texture two. I'm just gonna go over this and darken that up a bit. Um, I can also go over to wood texture. I can change the size of this, right? And I could begin to paint some more shadows across there, right? So that's maybe laying it on pretty thick there, but um, I think you get the idea. Right, if I wanted to give that a little more definition, same here with my building model layer. Let's say I wanted to darken some of the 
the shadows around the bottom here, right? Make it sort of stand out a little more. I could, right? I'm not doing a particularly good job there. I'm definitely not a careful job, but you can sort of see, I think, how that works, right? All right, so again, just quickly laying some things up. I'm not being too careful here. If I, if I was, I would probably put some wood there as well. Actually, that's, again, that's just really gonna bug me. I can take this wood texture that I already have and I can say duplicate, right click on it and say duplicate layer. There we are. It's gonna pop up and say, are you sure? I'm gonna say, yeah. It's gonna say wood texture copy then. I'm just gonna move that one over here. I just want to use, let's flip this. Again, I'm just going to go to transform, flip horizontally. There we are. And use that right there, maybe ish. And I will say edit, transform, distort. I'll just move this into place a little bit. Okay, so I'm just trying to, there, match that up just a bit. And now I can go around maybe and draw a selection box and just delete the part away that I don't want. Just give it a little bit of wood siding along the side there. Not sure why I snapped there. I should have been snapping here. Just trim that off a little bit. Just give it a little bit of a haircut there. All right. Again, I could be a little more careful there, but um, with that wood texture copy, maybe I do again. It looks like that side would be a little brighter. So maybe I'll use the, the dodge instead of the burn and just brighten that up a bit. Differentiate that face versus this face versus the bottom face. So this is the brightest face, then this side would be this, this sort of medium, then the bottom would be the sort of darker side, right? Okay, let's look at some vegetation quickly. And I'll start again to keep rendering this out or starting to build this up. So we'll look at maybe the mid-ground, right? We have this sort of sky as a background. Mid-ground is something that we need to sort of worry about a little bit here. And so let's open up a couple of these trees. We'll open these up in Photoshop again. Just another JPEG or PNG to be opened here. A couple more. White grunge texture. Bye, white grunge. See you later. Wood. All right. Tree. Okay. So really quickly, I'm just going to try the uh, magic wand tool. And is that really a transparent background or not? Looks like it might be. Okay, so let's try this. I'm gonna turn that layer on. I'm gonna go ahead and just select all and copy. And then I'll go back to my render and paste. Oh, okay, excellent. Now you can see that that green looks kind of electric. You know, it's, it's a little, little odd. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and transform it, just scale it up just a bit. All right. It also looks like it just sort of smacks right into a, like a pave, pavement, right? Um, a little too perfectly. And so I'm gonna do a couple of things here. Let's go ahead, we'll, we'll dress the ground in here in just a bit. Let's go ahead and just uh, get establish the scale. Um, this is a sort of a smaller tree. Um, and so go ahead and take out the hue and saturation just a bit, just again, take the edge off of some of that brightness there. Just give it a little bit of, no, make warm it up a little bit. Just make it a little more olivey. Give it some golds. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, we'll see. Right. It also looks like there's no shadow. So again, it sort of breaks some of this, um, the scene for us uh, a little bit. But let's add another tree. Let's add what looks like they're calling this an oak tree. All right, we'll try it. And that is not a transparent background. Hey, all right. So let's try this out. Let's let's select color range. Let's see if we can 
clip out most of this gunk here. There we go. Let's just delete that away. That looks better already. All right. Now I'm going to say select inverse. Right. So I selected that transparent background and deleted it, or that the checkered background and deleted it. Now I'm just going to say inverse. Well, actually, you know what? I can just select this whole thing. Control A, Control C, back to here, Control V. Still a few places where it's kind of opaque. Let me make this larger. Hopefully not too large. I'm actually going to put it behind, uh -huh, uh -huh. behind the building model layer. So it'll be off in the background here just a bit. Now you just notice, yeah, put it there. Keep it here, and then we're gonna we're gonna again we're gonna take care of the you know this transition between architecture and grounds, depending on what kind of texture and stuff we put on the ground, tree and ground. Um, trees and ground, et cetera, right? Oh, it looks like I still have that transparent background. That's just a lousy tree file. You know what? When in doubt, there are other trees in the forest, aren't there? Other fish in the sea. Maybe. Let's see, where's the other tree layer? Where'd that tree go? Ah, oh, here it is. I moved it down. Sorry, forgot that I moved it all the way down there. Let's get rid of that. Let me look for another tree here. Let's see if I can find some trees. There's a Palo Verde. There's some more texture. Um, hmm. All right, when in doubt, go back, go back a couple of class periods. Let's see. Documents, teaching, where is it? There it is. Should have some demo files here. Let's see what we have in here. Okay. Hmm, they're in here, let's see. Well, maybe not. I do want at least one more tree here. All right, back to Google. Me a little more balance in this. Let's see. Go with a nice sure tree here. Um, that was a nice tree. I like that tree. I'm gonna keep that. Let's see. How do you actually download it? Download the PNG. I worry about this sometimes. Like, what am I actually going to end up downloading here? Clip art. Okay, it's named the same thing. Bear with me here. Okay, we're good. Uh, here we are. And let's move that in here. Let's open that up. All right. Hey, that looks a lot better. Copy, paste. Ah, oh, it's so much better. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Oops. Make sure I select the tree and not the building. Move that around. Yeah, that's a nice tree. Happy little tree. We'll put that behind, like I said before. We'll go with that. Still, it's above the sky layer, but uh, but back behind the building. Um, and let's see here. There's a couple of things I might do. Oh, I'm kind of intrigued. I'll try this out. It could be a complete disaster, but try to put in some papers in here. I'm going to copy and paste. Go back to my render. I'm going to set this down for just a moment. And I'm actually going to build up a couple of these. 
oh, look at that. They might actually tie all together seamlessly. Wow. Somebody was thinking there. My goodness. Yeah. Not too shabby. All right. So it's this one and this one, I'm looking at which layers are which. I'm gonna select both of these layers because I copied and pasted this twice. So I have layer four and layer five. I'm just gonna select them both and right click and then say, merge those layers into one. I'm gonna call this pavers, double click on it. I'm gonna put this over the building model layer, um, but behind everything else. And now I'm gonna do some major editing here to try that transform distort. Let's see if we can try to match some perspective here, just right around here. It's just uh, probably would have been easier if I'd moved this into a better place before I started this, but you get the idea. I'm just trying to sort of think about how I would match that perspective. It's really kind of in, in pff, unseeable from there. So maybe the the scale is just needs to be rethought. Let's see here. That would go more like that. That would go more like that. I'm not too happy with that, to be honest. I'll put it in there and we can always turn that off. Um, one of the things I can do though, Go to Photoshop, ground cover. Let's see what we have here, ground cover. We also have ground texture. We could add a grassy meadow. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Or we could leave the ground actually white. Or we could think, let me think about the ground texture for a minute. Um, let's add some more plants while we're thinking about it. Let's try to take care of some of this, uh, this stuff here in the background. Go ahead and we'll start to layer some things up here a bit. The key thing is to have enough here that you don't start, you know, sort of stamping and repeating things in a way that they, they start to really repeat in a, in a really obnoxious way. Open. And to not be afraid to play around with the scale. Sort of having foreground, midground, and background. You can think about, I can play around with all of those. All right. Ground to cover. Here we have some grasses. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this copy. Try to find my original document here, render capture. There we go. I'm gonna paste that in. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to start to build up some things, right? So I'm going to, first of all, I'm gonna change this around a bit. Let's adjust that saturation and then also how darker light it is. I'm going to desaturate the crap out of this thing. There we are. It's already darker, so that's good. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. Let's start to make a, a few of these. Yep. start to change the scale in certain places and things like that. A couple of things here, we need to, we'll probably need to make a sort of transition between these things, but we'll, don't worry, we're gonna actually cover up where this actually like sort of hits the ground, right? So again, we're sort of building things up here um, bit by bit. Go ahead and paste one more time here. Oop. All right, there we are. Um, this time I'm going to transform it and probably scale it a bit in this direction, have it sort of toned back down this way. Each time I want the building model layer to be above these. Maybe. What happened there? It's weird that it changed. Maybe I got the bottom. This is what happens when I don't take my time. Here we go. Oh yeah, let me just flip it, I guess. Transform, flip vertically. 
There we are. That's what I was going for. More of that. Oh, yeah. All right. You know, so again, we're just trying to sort of take some of these things out. I'll go ahead and duplicate this one again. Just to have something over here. Again, I can work out, you know, any kind of seams that I see between these things here in the background. Um, now, again, we're just sort of layering things up. And again, the, the key thing about collages is don't be afraid of layering, right? The more layers, usually the better. You'll learn control as you go. Don't save grass, transparent ground cover. Oh, this one might work. That one might work as well. All right, let me select, using the magic wand tool, try to select this white background here. Yeah, let's see if I can delete that. Um, it's giving a white background here. Let me forget that and do that. Now delete that away. All right. Now let me select, copy, paste. Somewhere here. It's back. Where to go? It's back here. Oh no, that's the wrong thing. Where to go? There it is. All right, it was back there somewhere for some reason. All right, I'm going to move this one up and over. And of course, we can get more mounding sort of plants and things like that. It's not a big deal. But again, I'm just going to tone down that saturation a bit. Right? I always think about this, you know, things in the back, they, they start to get darker, they start to get fuzzier on purpose, right? I mean, that's, that's sort of how we see things. So trying to sort of Lay these things out a bit. We can try to get them to mound underneath. Um, I can always go here and use the burn tool if I have some brighter parts here, especially where things overlap or they get closer to the, the ground. I can start to darken them up a bit. Ooh, not too bad. Starting to get there. Taking a little bit of time, but so this, this, and this. I'll just go ahead and flatten those, merge those layers together. I'll call those grasses. Yeah. Give myself just a larger thing and just sort of darken some of those up. Right. Um, you know, we can give this some sort of ground cover. Let's, let's look at the ground here. Let me pull up a few more things here that we can use. I don't want to just keep using this over and over again. That wouldn't be any good. Um, so back to this, let's see. What was a ground cover? Try to find some more that we can use here. Yeah, there's certain It doesn't look like it's correct. Can you really save it or not? Free for personal use. Have you downloaded original PNG? Okay. All right, that looks good. Um, where to go? Oh, here it is. Sorry, just drag and drop this in the right folder here. Open this up, right? So again, it's always about looking for, you know, more and more stuff that you can start to, again, to layer in, right? And I can't repeat this enough. The illusion is always best when you're not repeating a bunch of things, but you can sort of, you know, again, make good use of all the, the various um, layers and, and start, to, start to really sort of build up um, a scene. Right. Uh, let's see here. Ugh, that's annoying. Um, let's see if I can just really just clip the crap out of that. There we are. That actually worked out for once. I'll be darned. Hue saturation. Give this a little more. I'm 
gold. Hit OK. Move this in place. Needs to be scaled back a bit. Probably needs to go over these. Maybe back behind them, actually. That'd be darned. Look at that. Sometimes you can get away with clumping some of these. Um, where to go? Oh, I keep pasting them over here. So if you clump them together, you know, sometimes that'll work. But then the, the question is, let's see how that works. You know, can you? Let's see, duplicate this one. Oop, there was the duplicate player 10 copy. There it is. I keep duplicating things in weird places. I'm not being very careful here. You know, maybe we just have this lower so we just see a little bit of stuff there. Again, I'm not going to worry about this too much yet. Um, Anyway, you get starting to get the idea, I hope. All right, now let's now let, let's quite literally look at that ground condition. Um, there's a couple of things. I'm not insinuating that you always use grass, but let me go ahead and find a good grass ground cover here that we can use maybe. But right now, let's see if I can find some grass patch here. It's not too bad, actually. I just wonder how large it is. We need a bunch of it. Let's see how big this is. It says background high def. Let's see. Free download. Should start automatically. Okay. I don't know why it took so long. It's only seven megabytes. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's what it what it claims to be. But that looks a lot bigger. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys just how we can start to uh, start clipping and pasting, and then how you use Clone Stamp to sort of spread out the and distribute the the uniqueness and and uh, cut out it for error. Um, then we'll also use a different type of brush. Um, and then the, the dodge burn um, to sort of resolve where plants and, and building are actually hitting the ground, hitting this ground. In this case, with grass, we can use a particular brush grass um, for that. So let's see, 6.6, 6.7. Why is it taking so long? Like seven megabytes. What in the world here? Okay, it looks like that's exactly what it purported to be. So let me drag this over. Let's see what it looks like in Photoshop here. All right, select all, copy, and let's find it. There we go, paste. All right, so we have a couple of things that we need really need to look at carefully here. Okay, one is the scale. Right, so we don't want to get anything that's too cl up close and it looks like it's way out of scale. But I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to, um, let's see here. Let me go ahead and label this grass. I got out of the habit of labeling some of these things. So what they are is beyond me. This is wood and this is wood, I believe. No, that's tree. See, I've been really sloppy. Here's a tree, I'll put that up top. Wood texture, wood texture, wood texture. I'll go ahead and, and uh, merge those layers and call them wood. And somehow they, that changed there. Um, all right, here we go, grass. I'm gonna start selecting certain portions of the grass and pasting them in. In doing so, we'll start to make different layers here. 
I'm not too worried yet about seams or anything like that at the moment. Although you can see that there's gonna be some issues here with tiling and stuff like that. So, um, All right, I have this. I'm gonna go up here and start to get some of the further back grass, start to sample that. And again, this is just patience. I can always go and get even more um, grass textures and start to mix and match them if I need to. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start to lay some of these out here. I'm just gonna focus maybe on this half so I don't spend the whole time doing this. It's kind of annoying to spend this much time. I'm going to control C. Oh, it's going to tell me I'm, I need to select that grass layer. Okay. Now control V. And I'll start to paste some of this in. Here we go. Start to blur and blend some of these things together a little better here. I'm just gonna add a couple more to sort of fill in some of the seams, this thing. Okay. And I'm going to flatten these, let's see. Make sure I have the right stuff here, grass. Go ahead and merge. I'll just merge all of these, all these sort of grass layers all at once. You have some of these as well, huh? Oh, great. Just move this down and select all of these and merge them. All right. Merge layers. All right, so this is called grass. Now we can use something called clone stamp tool. All right, um, I'm actually going to put this underneath the trees, underneath some of these other things, and above the building model layer. All right, and uh, let's see. So clone stamp, it's right here. Clone stamp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sample portions of this and then I'm going to draw with a really faint brush. I'm going to start to smooth out some of these transitions here. Okay, sample another place. Start to smooth over some of those parts where I have. I'm just going to try to avoid some of the repetition here that you're seeing. Option and then hold that down. Sometimes you have to sample multiple places and sort of. Just start to distribute. Oh. Some of that error and repetition around a bit more. Try to get rid of seams as well. All right, so I'm starting to do that here. And let's take a look at just this portion for a moment. There's grass, there's tree, there's wood texture. All right, we're starting to get some of these things. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that out, portions of that out. Oops, had the wrong layer selected. There we go, that would help. All right. Um, I just wanna make sure that I'm getting everything here. So 
So let's merge these, merge layers. Okay, then merge this, these two. I'll go ahead and get rid of this layer 10. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer and make a couple more here. Start trying to cover more of this stuff up here in the background. All right. So a couple of things here. One is that you know our grass gets brighter as it goes out. And you know, particularly under here, we would need to sort of fix that. So I'm gonna go to the grass layer. I'm gonna go to my dodge burn tool and go to burn. And in particular, start to start to range shadows here. Start to darken up the, the grass there where where things meet, meet it. Some of these are, hmm, I don't know, that grass is really sort of violety. You can start to see it here, it's starting to work a little better, right? To give it a little bit of that depth. Okay, um, maybe I try it over here as well. Let's see if I can get rid of, there's a real sort of neonish sort of Ugh, grossness there. That's kind of in the way there. So I'm wondering if I take this and I just adjust it down a little bit. I don't want to overdo it either. And I also take out some of the saturation there. See what that looks like now. It starts to darken up a bit. There we go. It's a little better there. Right around those edges. Right around this tree. Oop, a little too much. Really easy to overdo it here. So I don't want to do that. Okay. But I do want to sort of fuzz some of this stuff up. So here, I'm going to look at this tree layer. I'm going to use my eraser tool and I'm going to change the eraser brush. Let's see if I can find legacy brushes. Let's go with, try to find my grass eraser tool here. Change its size a bit. Try and just soften that up a bit. Right, so I'm just deleting portions of the tree away with this sort of grass looking brush and letting the grass sort of float back into the, into the, the foreground here. This is not a perfect grass by any means. You can start to see some repetition here, which is not ideal. Um, there seems to be a real sort of color and, and scale change from the upfront to the, the midground there, which is again, also not ideal. Um, but now what we would do is we would, let's see, take this grass, I'm just gonna shorten it up a bit. And I'm gonna get rid of the portions that are overlapping our building here. We don't want our building to look like it's growing grass on top of, or like on, on the edges here. Just one last thing, and then we'll return back to this tomorrow and we'll start doing some of these things step-by-step step together. You know, at this point, I'm just going to clip out portions of the grass that are, I obviously don't want. You know, they're overlapping or my building or something. Let's undo that here and let's remove this portion. There we go. And then for the, I'm not being very careful here, but for the architecture, we do the same thing, right? So 
I could start to, oops, building mode layer. Oh, why is it not on? There we go. Grass, turn the layer back up to opaque, and then go to my building model layer. Why is that painting white? Oh, because the grass needs to be below the building model. Ah, uh, okay, sorry, I, I need to fix a few things here with my layers, right? But you can begin to see, you can start to build things up as a, this is not a particularly, it's kind of garish with the colors and stuff, but um, I'll have the, we'll start to build these things up um, tomorrow in class, okay, together. Um, we'll also start to add, you can add uh, scaled figures like silhouettes like we've been using or um, the photorealistic people. Um, but uh, and we'll, we'll start talking about things like that. But you know, the key thing is how do we begin to um, to build up a sort of uh, uh, your. It's going to take a while to sort of get better at this, right? Um, and so building up your skill set um, for sure is important. Um, but we'll just do it in, in phases, okay? But I just wanted to sort of give you a taste of what we'll be up to here. Go to exposure, maybe. Darken that tree up a bit. It's maybe darkened into the background there. Um, you know, we could always use our our paintbrush tools and start to to mess around here with things a little better. Um, we would add shade along the ground here, maybe. Um, I can always add a tree layer and and turn it down and, and tilt it and then set it uh, to be a, a background. Um, the same thing here, you know, with those grasses. The grass would need to, you know, acknowledge, you know, and get darker around some of these these areas here, right? Maybe not too dark. Maybe I'm darkening up a little too much there, but but this idea that you know there's a little bit of shadow in some places. Okay. So, all right. Um, I'm looking forward to this. It's gonna, you know, again, we'll take time to sort of build these things up. Um, and we'll start looking at interiors as well. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to sort of whet your appetites. And I will um, upload.